What is Easter all about? Mm -hmm. Eggs. You go on Easter egg hunts. We hunt for um eggs and and the Easter bunny. There's there's some candies on an egg. There's some candies on an egg, and then as you open it, then then you you can eat it. What's Easter all about? Bunnies. David killed Goliath. Yes. David killed Goliath, that's true. Easter is all about all about decorating. What is Easter all about? It's about Jesus rising from the grave and died on the cross. Did he rise from the grave then die on the cross? No, he died from the cross and rose from the grave. Did he stay dead or did he rise? He rose. Did he die for you? Yes. All all this all the people loves him. Yeah. Did he did he rise from the grave? No. Y yes. What do you think? Did he did he wake up and live again? Yeah. Do you like Easter? Yeah. Is it your favorite holiday? It is. Why do you and like Christmas? And Christmas. And it's got Santa. I'm a candy. Do you know anything about the Easter story that has Jesus in it? Yeah. Can you tell me about that? What's that all about? I don't know. Did Jesus stay in the grave? No. Did Jesus die for, for us? And did he stay dead? Or did yeah. he get up? He stayed dead. He stayed dead? Is he dead today? You know, actually, when Jesus died, after three days, do you remember what happened? He rose again. What? He rose from the dead. What? <laughs> How did Jesus die? Because he, because they're putting nails on his hands and his legs. Jane, get back in there. And, and what did they nail him to? On the cross. And then Jesus come back alive. Wait, you mean he didn't stay dead? He, he come back alive. I love him. And he's great. He drink something, healing water, and then, then he come back alive and do a hay job. Then, then what he does, the hay, he did a big bottle of poison. Like Dana! It.
Turn to your seats or remain standing. And we turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 27. And we will read from the 59th verse. Continue our reading through the 28th chapter of Matthew. I want to say what an honor it is to have you here today. Thank you for being with us. We are so honored. All of our guests, friends, family, thank you for joining us on this wonderful Easter Sunday morning. God is here. He's alive. There's hope. And all of the wonderful things that Easter reminds us of. Resurrection Sunday. I'm so thankful for all the God. So thankful my family's here, Michelle and I, my kids. We, uh, we're so honored to live in Vider, Texas and serve the great community here in Vider, Southeast Texas. What a great blessing it is to live in Texas. I've, I've lived a whole lot of other places and I found the best, so I decided to stay. Not is it just, it's not just great because of whatever the climate or you might not like it. I like, once you've lived in cold, you're like, Man, it don't matter how hot it gets. I just don't like snow. You don't have to shovel humidity, you know. So, <laughs> But it's more than, the, than that. It's the wonderful people that make our community, this church, exactly what it is. And I give honor to our staff that work so hard. I want to honor our volunteer team that we're here early. So we said we, every Sunday we have cars on the grass. And so we had the parking lot team test tech. And so we have 90 cars on the grass. So if you had to park on the grass, that's pretty awesome. You know you're in the right place. Amen. Praise God. Well, I was going to preach on tithe and offerings because I only get some of you once a year. Then I was like, well, maybe I'll go with wives submitting to their husbands. Then I knew I'd get in trouble. So we'll just go with Matthew 27 and 59. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now this next day that was followed the day of preparation, the chief priest and Pharisees came together into Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon him. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for you know that you seek Jesus, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. Why don't we read this one together? Verse 6. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place 
where the Lord lay. Amen. For a few moments, I want to title my remarks, A Stone, a Seal, and a Soldier. A Stone, a Seal, and a Soldier. Father, I thank you for this wonderful Sunday morning, the gift of life, hope, renewing, and resurrection. As we enter into this season, Lord, of our church, our family, I pray that your word would come, that you would speak to us, that we would receive it with open hearts, ready to allow it to change, transform us uh, into what you have. Those that have walked into the building needing a resurrection of life, hope, a renewing in their lives, I pray that would begin wherever we're at. Let your word minister to that place. In the wonderful name of Jesus, and everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together. Give God a great praise as you're seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Some of y'all might be new, you're like, oh, these people are crazy. And uh, the truth is, we are. We're actually kind of keeping it tame because we got the visitors here. We don't want to freak you out. But if you want to see, the, when we get woke up, you better come back tonight at 5 o'clock. You got to be brave. You got to be brave. A stone, a seal, and a soldier. Friday night, he's been beaten. He's been spit on. He was slapped. He's endured the wood of a tree that he had created. He's got nails that have pierced both hands and both feet. A crown of thorns has been pressed upon his head. He is forgiven and it is finished. The sun sets and it turns into Saturday. We are told that Saturday is silent. <clears throat> but really, Saturday has quite a bit going on. Saturday morning, those who had followed Jesus woke up hoping it had all just been a nightmare. Only to reach down and pick up the Jerusalem Gazette where the headlines read, Jesus of Nazareth, the I am, now the I was. Their minds go back to the crucifixion, reliving every graphic and gory detail. They watch in his mind's eyes, he hangs there for nine hours, hoping, praying at that moment, believing that a miracle would happen and he would be revived or relieved. But as the sun begins to set on that Friday night and Sabbath is upon them, they know that in order to preserve the body from being burned by the Romans, they need to get it down quickly and into a grave. And so Joseph of Arimathea goes to Pilate and the Bible says he begs the body. They pull him down, not with, with, with just quick haste, having to wrap him before the sun sets and get him buried. Not with enough time to do the ceremonial ointments, uh, that would normally preserve the body. They did not have embalming as we do in this day and age. They place him quickly wrapped in a cloth in this borrowed tomb. Then on Saturday, the Bible tells us in our text today that the Pharisees go to Pilate. And they say, listen, Pilate, the deceiver said that he was going to come back to life in three days. Now, the only possible way that could happen is if the disciples came and they were to rob the body from the tomb. And then rumors will start, and uh, it will be even worse than it already was. And so we need you to lock down the tomb. We need you to make sure the body does not get stolen. We, we have a stone. It weighs between 2,000 and 4,000 pounds, but that's not enough. So Pilate says, put the government seal on it. Place a soldier in front of it. He says, if we have a stone, a seal, and a soldier, ain't no way he's getting out. We will cover it, we will seal it, and we will protect it. After the Sabbath, early, so look at your neighbor and say it was early Sunday morning. The Marys are on their way to anoint the body. They were going to bless and anoint the body of Jesus Christ. Now remember, he's dead. Their emotions are not one of joy, elation, happiness, goosebumps, none of that. They aren't dressed in their Easter Sunday morning flowery dresses it's mourners it's black it's dark they were going to bless Jesus knowing he was dead they were going to bless the body of Jesus Christ knowing he would not bless them knowing there was no hope left they still went and honored him not for what he would do in their future because their future was gone they simply went to give him praise for what he had done in their past. Now, it's a Pentecostal church, so you're going to have to excuse us a minute. But when I think of the... That, why are you running? Why are you shouting? Because we're so in love with him, we don't, 
we don't even have to praise him for what's going to happen. We can look back and say what he did. Uh, come on, Mary Magdalene could say, maybe there's no future left, but I remember when I was, come on, I was a messed up, I was addicted to sex, I was, come on, but, but he came and he set me free, he set me free. So I've just gotta praise him for everything he's already done. Come on, it's easy to sit and look back, come on, and, and give God praise knowing the end of the story. But there's some of you that don't know the end of your story. Come on, it looks like it's hopeless, it's over, it's dead, but could you put your hands together? Because God was good to you at some point in your past. He intervened into a situation, he changed your life. He's a good God, he's a good God. That's the kind of God we serve. I'm gonna bless his body. I'm going to bless the body that disappointed me. I'm going to tell you, sometimes the body will disappoint you. Sometimes the body can leave some blood on you. But don't you ever give up on the body. And on their way, on their way to bless the dead body of Jesus, they realized they had more than a singular problem. They had three. They had a stone. They had a seal. And they had a soldier. The stone is a problem they could not move. The seal was government authority. It was a power they could not control. The soldier was a person that they could not confront. I know you hear a lot about Friday, and we call it good because of Sunday. Sunday is called victory, but I would call Saturday the worst day. Friday, Jesus is bled, but at least he was breathing. Friday, he was hurting, but at least he was here. He was groaning, but at least I could hear his voice. But, but Saturday, he's just dead. And I've got a problem I can't move. I've got a power I can't control. And I've got a person I'm struggling to confront. But with all of those things against him, Eastgate, they went to church anyway. With no hope, with problems, powers, and people against them, they, they said, we can't move, we can't control it, and we can't confront it, but... Let's go anyway. Let, let's go anyway. And when they arrived at the tomb, they made an awesome discovery. God had beat them there. Oh, I wonder if I got anybody that's ever come to the house of the Lord hopeless only to discover <laughs> that God was working while you were worrying. I, I said that's what Easter reminds me that I can worry but it doesn't stop God from working I can be I can even have some doubt but that doesn't mean it keeps him dead your doubts your worries your stress your anxiety cannot hold back the God the God's still working even when I don't see it he had been working and they get to the grave and, and the stone was rolled away. The seal had been removed and the soldiers had been restrained. God had stepped in. And let me just remind you on Easter Sunday morning that when God steps in, there's no person, there's no problem. Come on. And there's definitely no power that can keep him back. Come on, God can break the power. That's why we run. That's why we shout. That's why we roll. The question isn't why do we run. The question isn't how can you not. The question isn't, well, why are they dancing? Here's the question. How can you not dance? When I realized that God was working, that what I thought was dead has come back to life. Sorry, that's more than a stoic amen and a dead song. I get up and I've got to move my feet, clap my hands, lift my voice. When God steps in, there's no power, person, or problem. God can break the power of the ruler. I said he can break the power of the ruler. The forces of the enemy have no power against him. God can handle any situation, any person. God can break the rule of the power. Ah, look at your neighbor and say, God broke some rules to bless me. I mean, they said I had to have a certain qualification and a type of degree to get that job, but here I am. I, I'm supposed to have 16 doctorate degrees to be up here today, but here I stand. Uh, my, my family's supposed to be broken and ripped apart. That's what the rule said when you do what... The rule of shame said that I don't deserve salvation, uh, but he broke the rules. Uh, the rules said I should be bitter by what was done to me by a friend. Uh, come on, I should... There was the rule of, of anger and the rule of, uh, of methamphetamines that said you can't be free. Come on, 
There's this rule that says once you're an alcoholic, you'll always be an alcoholic, but, but God has a way. God has a way of break. That's what Easter is. It's a reminder that there's no power. There's no government seal that can keep. That's why the Bible says no weapon. Oh, if you know your Bible, you ought to preach with me. No weapon formed against me. You want to know why? Because of Easter Sunday morning. It's a reminder that there's no weapon, no power. He can deal with the power. Oh, preacher, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't worried about that. I, I know God can beat the devil, but I'm, uh, you ain't ever met my boss. <laughs> You, you ain't had to live with my, my mother-in-law. You, you don't know. I got people problems. I got people problems. I ain't got devil problems. I got, but he can, he, can, he, can, he can deal with the people. He can handle the anger that's being dished out on you. He can handle the negativity of the people that surround you. He can handle the lies that have been spoken over you. He can handle the jealousy that is held against you. Come on, he can beat back the bitterness of people. Come on, that they hold within them against you. I, I, I'm talking to somebody that knows about people. I said, you know about people. You know, the, you know, you find out that your friends are fake, but your enemies are always real. I've learned that in my life, that I can find out some fake friends, but my, my enemies, they, they always seem to come right on through. But, but even then, I'm kind of like David. Oh, Lord, how are they that increase that trouble me? Many there are that rise up against me. Many there be, which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You ought to note that he doesn't say God stopped him. He said God shielded me. Not every arrow gets stopped. Not every sword is, is sheathed. But let me tell you one thing. You've got a shield. And I can look back. Oh, oh, oh. And the Easter story says you can put 15 Roman guards in front of that tomb. You can put the army, all the might and military power. But there is no person and there is no power. If you're a dick. I know you got some people problems. But on Easter, he'll make a way. He makes a way. Oh, preacher, preacher, preacher. He can... Tell me about the freedom that comes with resurrection power. Tell me how he's more powerful than the seal, that he's more powerful than the people. But preacher, I got some problems. See, I got a, a diagnosis. And the doctor looked at me and said, there's nothing else we can do. I wonder if I got anybody in the house ever had a doctor tell you there's nothing else we can do. I see a hand in this section, hands, multiple hands. I see hands over here. Anybody got hands in this one? Yeah, there's cancer. There's cancer. Come on, over here, multiple. Come on, the doctor said there's no, see, that's why some of y'all like sitting there all hoity-toity, you know, like you from England. We only got one person from England here, you know, and she dances and shouts and runs. Hallelujah. But, but we can't sit there hoity-toity with, with a high and mighty attitude because we had a doctor look at us and say, we don't have any more answers. But when there was a problem so big, God began to move. He began to heal. When the addiction was out of control and I tried everything, I knew the problem, come on, was solved. I had bills I couldn't pay. I had kids I couldn't control. My marriage was in a mess. My emotions were running wild. But we serve a God that can solve, fix, remove the, remove the stone. I said he can, he can solve the problem. He can remove the stone. Look at your neighbor say he'll move the stone. No, don't, don't keep talking to the same neighbor. Talk to another neighbor. Say he'll move the stone. He'll move the stone. Hmm. Go back to who you're comfortable with and say, he, he moved the stone. Now, you probably remember this story from the last year you were here. How did he do? Good to see you, Brother Rose. I love you, man. He's been working. That stone began to roll away. How did he roll it away? You kidding me? Y'all don't know this? This makes me feel like a failure. How did the stone roll physically? What happened? There it is. Someone said it. You said it was an earthquake. They had a problem. So God made the earth shake to fix. 
Seems like God gave him another problem to fix a problem. You know what I've learned? That when, when God is fixing one problem, sometimes it feels like he's creating another problem. All of a sudden, my world is shaking and I'm blaming God and God is saying, don't blame me. This is how I'm taking care of the other problem. I got to shake... Come on, if you came to church on Sunday morning and your world is shaking and your world is rocking and your marriage is a mess and things seem to be falling apart, maybe God, maybe God is just rolling away a stone. Maybe. You say, I don't know about all that. Well, just ask Brother Paul and Brother Silas linked up in a prison cell. There they are giving praise. And you know what happened? The earth began to shake. And as the earth shook, the doors opened because, come on, to solve the problem, sometimes my world's got to shake. Uh, I said sometimes the world and maybe you came on this Easter Sunday morning and your world is, is shaking come on now I know we all got our suit and ties on we're looking all pretty for Easter but, but let me tell you the story behind the Eastgate members and myself that sit here our ties and suits they, they're, they're just, just a celebration this is our celebration where for where we came from if you could have seen us before the suit if you could have known us before the dress Oh God, if you could just view, view us before we had our hallelujah shout knew how to clap on beat. If you knew me then, if you'd have known the, the, the earthquake I had to come through just to get here, you would understand why we're shouting, running, rolling, and giving him praise. My world, and so if you're here, I, I, my world, preacher, what do I do? What do I do? I got people, I got problems, I got powers. Here's what... In the, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the others married to the sepulcher. Here's what, what they were doing. They're going to bless the body. And behold, there was a great, not just a little, a great one. I've always got the order wrong. I've always thought they woke up, they just went to the tomb and ta-da! Here it was. Jesus, his little bunny, some tulips right there by the stone, you know. But that's not how it happened. They were on their way to the tomb. And while they were going in their disappointment, in their when it couldn't get any worse, all of a sudden it got worse. Let me just preach to somebody. You didn't think it could get any worse. I know you, you can't bob your head because your visitor's here, but that's okay. Let me just talk to you. You know, when I thought it couldn't get any worse, she left me. When I thought it couldn't get any worse, it began to, it began to shake in my life. My whole life I did in my body. And then it was my money. And then it was my marriage. And it just kept getting worse. That's, that's, that's where they are. But, but, but what, did, what do you do? What do you do? What did they do? I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd go home, get in my bunker. I'd go to Walmart and buy all the bread and toilet paper because it's about to go. But they didn't. They just kept going towards the tomb. Preacher, what are you saying? What do I do? I, I, you, you've got me. You've got me. I, I'm not going to bob my head because I don't need anybody to know, but you got me. It's gone from bad to worse to worser. And here I sit and I don't know what to do. What do I do? You keep going. But my marriage is, don't give up, keep going. Here's what Easter reminds me, that right before I see the victory, it's gonna get darker than it's ever been. It's gonna shake worse than it's ever shook. It's gonna be awful, but you just keep going to the tomb. Keep going to the tomb, keep going to the tomb. But he's dead, keep going to the tomb. But I'm disappointed, keep going, don't give up. But my business is broke, I'm in there, keep going. Don't give up, whatever you do, you keep believing. You believe even when the body's dead. You believe when it's dark. You believe when it's shaking. Whatever you do, don't stop. Keep your faith alive in the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Keep on, keep on, keep on. And the Bible says when they arrived, the angel gives them report and he says, he's not here, go, 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 go tell everybody. Tell everybody he's alive. Mm. But just because Jesus got the victory and came out of the grave doesn't mean the enemy gave up. The devil wasn't standing outside the tomb with the white flag saying, all right, you win. Let me tell you something, saint of God, been in this a while. There'll never be a day where the enemy gives up. 
If you somehow think you've got the enemy beat and that it's never going to, it's going to never come back again, and you, that's a prideful, arrogant attitude. You about you, he already got you. On your final breath on earth, he'll be hoping he gets you. So he, he has a counter plan. The soldiers go back and they tell the report, our plan failed. The plan failed? Yeah, the seal didn't work, soldier didn't work, and the stone didn't work. It's, he, he fixed all those things, the problem, the people, and the power. He, he took care of that. And the, the leaders, they say, okay, well, there's nothing we can do, so all we can do is spin the story. I'm going to tell you about the devil. He's the master spinner of the story. He's the master of telling you something that ain't true and lying through his teeth. That's why we say the devil is a liar. And so the story goes like this. The enemy said, we will spin the story as follows. We will, we will tell that the disciples came and that they stole the body. And now the body is still dead. It's just been stolen. The first Easter Sunday morning, there were two sermons being preached. Mary's Facebook post was, he's alive with one of those cool pictures that were flashing, you know, in yellow with the little bunny and the tulips, and he's not here, he's gone. With the picture of the empty chair, it's just, that's, that's Mary, they're, 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 he's alive. But, but the, the devil and the enemy, the spirit of Antichrist that controlled the government system and man's official position was that he's still dead. The two messages were, he's alive, and the other message was, he's dead. And the message hasn't changed 2,000 years later. It is still the conflict of Jesus is alive versus he's not. I said it's the same message today that you are confronted with and a choice that you will have to make. He's either alive or he's dead. And the question is, whose report are you going to believe? You can't escape it. It confronts us all. It's the choice that determines actions in our lives and the faith that we will declare and hold fast to. Either you say he's alive and I believe and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve him or you say he's dead. There is no God. It's over and it's finished. I'm turning to atheism. I'm turning to idolatry. There is no God. Either he's alive or he's dead. Either he is Lord or he's a liar. Either he's a savior, come on, or he's a scammer. He's either alive or he is dead. Paul said, if Christ is not risen, we are of all men most miserable. If Christ is not alive, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friend and foe, if he is not alive, there is no gospel. Lock the door. Get on the train to hell and have a party. Shut it all down. Waste your, we are wasting our time. If he is not alive, why get buried in the waters of baptism? when there really is no hope of resurrection. Why repent of my sins to a God that cannot hear? He's, if he's alive, if he's dead, it's over. I said, if he's dead, it's over. Huh. So you got to answer this question. In a secular world filled with atheistic ideology, ideology all of them, the, the, the idea of our world right now is so anti-God. It used to be which Christian form did you pick to believe in God now it is there is no God come on now president of our nation banned all religious symbols from his Easter party our government has declaimed this day transgender day of visibility come on now they, they, they can have the bunny but not the cross Cele celebrate Ramadan but don't celebrate the resurrection I know it's going to get a little uncomfortable. That's my job. And, and the spirit of Antichrist is dominating our world. Why? Because to them he's dead. But you're faced with a choice today. Is he alive? Because if he's alive, you've got to change your life. If he's alive, then you've got to repent and be buried in the waters of baptism and be filled with the gift of the... If he's alive, you've got to come out of complacency. If he's alive, I've got to... If, but if he's dead, I'll join you. I tell you, if he's dead, you've never seen a sinner as good as me. If he's dead, sign me up for the beer party, the drug party. I'm out. Let's do it. But if he's alive, I've got to dance. If he's alive, I'm going to shout. If he's alive, I'm giving him my life because no other God, no other God has done what he has done can do what he did I gotta follow a man that didn't get other people out but got him himself out 
So to help you win the argument, defeat your debater, I'll give you a little, little points tomorrow at the work when they're making fun of you because you went to church. You thought it was bad last Sunday when you went to the other church. They really get you when you come to the Pentecostal. Oh, you went to oh, you went to the you went to the crazy people church. I hope you go back and say, yeah, they are absolutely crazier than we thought they were. I, I, they are radical nut jobs. That's that's what that's the, that's the first impression we're going for. They they so the women go so here. The women go and they tell, they tell the disciples, they say, hey, uh, he's alive. Mark says that they didn't believe him. And John says that they ran to the tomb. They, they said, okay, no, we don't, no, we, we're gonna, we, there's no way. So we will settle this once and for all. We'll go find the body. Because if there's a body, then he's dead. If there's, I said, if there's a body, you won the argument. Show me the dead body, Anthony. And you win the argument. If, if there's a dead body, Mary's a liar. If there's a dead body, the book ain't true. And that's all the devil needs to win and forever settle the argument. The de debate is over if he's got the dead body. If he has the body and he knows where the body is and, 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 and he can hang it in the middle of the city. I mean, if, if I'm the devil and I got the body, I'm putting that in a clear plexiglass coffin it's embalmed forever in case anybody ever tries to bring a thing about him getting out of that grave I got the body I got evidence if you got evidence I won't lie I, 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 if you bring and show me the body I'm going to give it to you find the body, body Satan and you win I mean you've got the power of all the governments you've got more money than we do you got the power of every religion false you got power of public opinion You've got the greatest minds in archaeological, with archaeological skills and research abilities. I mean, think of everything they found. Think about it. You can be seated, but I have to stand. Th think about it. They, 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 they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. I mean, think about it. They've uncovered the ashes and found Pompeii. They, they, they went and they found Rosetta Stone. They've got the, the Moai statues and the terracotta army. They, they did. They found Troy, and they've been thousands of feet down underneath the ocean and done found the Titanic. Yeah. Anybody try to tell you the Titanic? They done found the ship. It happened. Yeah. They, they moved thousands of pounds of earth and sand and, and discovered and unearthed Sutton Who. They, they've brought back rocks from the moon. And with all that, there's one thing they can't find. Not one person in the history of the world with all their t technology, with all their might, with all their men, with all their money, with all their power, not one person, not one person has seen the dead bot. They've not found him. And I can tell you why they haven't found him. Because he's alive. <laughs> I said he ain't in it. There ain't no dead body to be found. I said he done came up out. And so he's alive and I believe he's alive. Nobody. Nobody's ever seen the body because there is no dead body. On the flip side, the next point is somebody did see the body. Paul said, he said he appeared unto, the, unto Peter. He, he said he appeared unto the 12 apostles. He said he appeared unto 500, even more than 500. He said he appeared unto all the apostles. And then he said he appeared unto me. I'll say that again. He, he, Paul said, he said, he's alive. He says, because he showed himself to Peter. He showed himself to the apostles. He showed himself to more than 500 at one point. He showed himself to, to me, myself. He said, I, I, he, he, he's alive because he was seen you. And, and you're like, well, I think they could be lying. Really? You think they could be lying? Here's something I've learned about liars. They don't last. You want to find out if they're lying? Start doling out the punishment. Come on. You think they won't rat on you? Just think, when you hold a, when you hold a sword over their head, they're going to rat on you. And Matthew was killed by the sword. And Mark was drugged by horses. And Luke was hung. John was boiled in hot oil. Peter was crucified upside down. James was beat to death with a club. 
James, the son of Zebedee, was beheaded. Bartholomew was beaten to death with a whip. Andrew was crucified. Thomas was stabbed with a spear, Brother Linder. Jude was killed with arrows. Matthias was stoned and then beheaded. Paul was tortured and beheaded. And all he had to do was say, it's not true. All, all of the people that saw him were killed because they said he's alive. And if they had not seen him, they would have denied him. Because, come on, some, but they said, I would rather believe. I would rather die than deny because I know what I saw. And let me tell you something today. He's alive. He's alive. The liars don't last. There's no body. He's alive. Final point. Paul is trying to convince the apostles that Christ, that he would converted Paul who had been Saul. He was a murderer, a killer, a, ho a horrible man, horrible person, filled with pride, religiosity. Until one day he said, I was riding along and all of a sudden I was knocked off my beast. He said, I, I, I saw him and, I, and now I am not what I used to be. He said, I, I can tell you he's real. Just look at me. Oh, I can tell you he's real. Paul said, I know what happened. Look at what I used to do and look what I do now. Look at how I used to think and look at how I think now. So here's the truth. The evidence is uh, there's no body they found. Everyone who saw him would not deny him. But here's the most powerful proof of the resurrection. Look at what he did in me. <laughs> I said he lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives inside of me. I tell you, I don't need no other proof because I can look at my life. It was broken. My life was busted. My life was a mess. But he came. Come on, friend, this isn't just a sermon, a story, and a, a building where we clap in theological agreement and we come together with conservative ideas. This is a house of hope. This is a house where broken came, where battered have come, where bruised have been mended, where minds have been put back together. He's alive. He's alive. There's no body. Come on, there's no body. The devil has no evidence. He's alive as we stand across this house. It is the Christ's death. It is Christ's death that leads to his burial, that leads to the resurrection. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. What do you got to believe? The gospel. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It is through the gospel that we are saved. Paul says in Galatians, he says, if I or an angel come and we preach any other gospel, let us be cursed. In Thessalonians, he says, in flaming fire taking vengeance upon them, that's hell who know not God and have not obeyed. Obeyed. That means action. The gospel. So your only question should be, what is the gospel? Now someone will say, well, the gospel is good news. No, that's the meaning of the word. The meaning of the word gospel is good news. The question you should ask next is, what's the news? Because I have to know it, I have to believe it, and I have to do it. That's what, the, that's what your Bible says. So if you don't know what the gospel is, I'll give it to you according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 through 4. It is Christ's death, Christ's burial. And what makes it powerful is that resurrection. And if you don't obey his death, if you don't obey his burial, and you do not obey his resurrection, he says in flaming fire, taking vengeance, not to bring a damper on a happy day because it can still be a happy day. If you have not obeyed the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, come on somebody, you can, you can do more than hear about Easter. You can experience it. You, you can kill the old you. You know the you you don't like. 
You know the you that's going through hell. You can kill that you. That dude can die. That dude can shed some blood this morning. And you can put him in a grave. It's not going to be with dirt that we cover you. And we will cover you in water. But you will be buried with Christ in baptism to rise, to have a resurrection of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That's why Peter, when asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? What do I do? He said, here's what you do. He said, die, repent. He said, be buried, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The death, the burial, and the resurrection is the gospel. It's the good news. That's Easter. And I wonder if I got an Easter witness that would say, I've already, I already said goodbye to the old man and I put him in a grave. I came up out of the waters filled with his spirit and I can say, he's alive and I'm alive. He's alive and I'm alive and I will live forevermore. So today, let it sink in. Yeah, it's my job. I gotta tell you the truth because I gotta stand before God. I got to tell you, you've got to repent, be buried in water, filled with his spirit. I've got to tell you that by his stripes you're healed and you can be set free. That he was bruised for the inner wounds. He was beaten for your physical sickness. He died for your eternal salvation. And I don't know where you're at on this Easter Sunday morning. But whether you're sick in your body, you're bruised in your emotions, or you're lost in your soul. Easter and resurrection reminds us we don't have to stay that way. Whether it's a problem, a power, or a person you're facing, there's a solution, and his name is Jesus. As we bow our heads across the congregation, I wonder if you would say, Preacher, I, I sit here today, and it's okay if you're a first-timer. You, you don't have to know how to do everything, but if you could just be honest with me, no one's looking. It'll be just me and you, eyes are closed. And say, I... I've got a problem, a person, or a power that I'm up against that I don't know what's going to happen. Would you just be honest? I know you've got the Easter roast or ribs, but go ahead and just say, yeah, I've got a problem. I've got some stuff on me, and there's hands going up across. No one's looking. Please close your eyes. Amen. There's no one looking. Thank you. Amen. There's people in the balcony. Hands are in the balcony. Thank you. As you keep your eyes closed and your head bowed, I want now every one of us to lift with eyes still closed. I just want you to lift your hands and I want you to lift your head towards the heavens. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills. I need you to see in your mind's eye a resurrected Savior for he's got to move beyond the theology into an experience, beyond someone you know about to someone you know and today he's going to draw near to you. If you're comfortable and your hands are growing weary, just lay your hand on that person next to you. If you're in this altar and you'd like to come and join some of us at Eastgate Church, we have a tradition as a family. We gather around the altar. It's just something we do. It's a good tradition. If you want to join someone around the altar today and say, you know what, I I I believe today I'm going to leave this house with a heart filled with faith. Uh, Maybe you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus. On Easter Sunday morning, I can't think of a greater day to consecrate and dedicate your future. I pray now, Lord, amen. I pray now, Jesus, in your name. Now what I'd like you to do is begin to open your mouth and just begin to worship him. I want you to declare faith. God, I believe every lie that's come against your mind. There's been so much doubt that's come in your mind this last year. I said there's so much confusion in our world right now, and it's seeped into our spirit. But I wonder if you could just begin to declare your faith in God. I believe. Maybe that's all you can say is, God, I believe. I'm not giving up on you. I'm not giving up on the body. I'm not going to give up on seeking you. And as your hand rests on someone's shoulder, if you're comfortable, come on and you know them. Take them by the hand and you begin to pray together. I want you to gift them the gift of your voice speaking faith over their life. Begin to pray for their faith that it would not fail them. Go ahead and begin to declare life and resurrection, hope and salvation. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. If he, uh, come on, if God's ever done something for you uh, and you're a believer, uh, this morning we lift our voice as a congregation. In a moment we'll conclude, we'll return to our life, but this moment we dedicate, uh, we dedicate our lives to you, Jesus. Our hands are linked, our minds and bodies, Lord, are present in this place uh, as our faith is restored in the hope that there is a God that lives. Uh, That our God, unlike others, has come back to life, who rules and reigns. So, Lord, I submit my problem, the unmovable stone, the thing that I can't seem to get through. I give it to you, Jesus, on this Sunday morning. And I pray, Lord, that my friends this morning would as well. 
God, I give to you the power of the adversary, the thing, the enemy, the demonic attack against my home. I give it to you. God, the people in my life, there's so much help. There's things being said that aren't true. There's jealous lies being spread. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I give them to you. I will let you fight the battle. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be that say of my soul, there is no help for him in God but thou, O Lord. You're a shield for me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. If you're praying that prayer, could you give him a praise as you feel a lifting of your head, a lifting of your spirit? God, I give you my life. I give you my soul. I give you my heart. I give you my today. I'm giving you my past and I give you my tomorrow. God, I give you my pain and I give you my joy. I give you my hurt, but I want to give you my hallelujah. Come on, don't just give him the problem. Give him the person. Give him yourself. Come on, it's easy to give him the trouble. But can you give him a hallelujah? Can you give him a Jesus? You're great. Jesus, I love you. You're wonderful. You're mighty. You're holy and powerful. In the wonderful name of Jesus. In the wonderful name of Jesus.